Three semifinals, one grand final. The city is Trondheim. The competition is Melody Grand Prix. Girl, girl, girl. 21 acts are gunning for the trophy. Shall we unpack? Are you ready to talk about it? Let's do this! this off, we're actually starting with Ulrika. You will remember Ulrika from the cancelled Eurovision, the Corona Eurovision, the Eurovision in 2020 that didn't happen. Well, guess what? My girl actually won the right to represent Norway and that didn't happen. Unlike some of her peers, she wasn't given a second chance because Melody Grand Prix rolled in the following year. So she actually never got to go to Eurovision. Interestingly, she's back with a song called Honestly, which has been trending on Twitter. I haven't heard it. I haven't even heard a snippet of it, but that's going to change now. According to the official blurb, the song is called Honesty. No, it's called Honestly, not Honesty. Honestly. And it's based on her own life. It's her most truthful song to date. It's about how you want to be there for someone you love when they go through bad experiences. We are going to cue the track and press play. Oh, I like the artwork. She's got that really good pop voice, hasn't she? Couldn't tell you were broken. Couldn't tell you were broken. This is good. Oh, this is good. The lyrics here, certainly from the first verse, is really meaningful. It's a little overproduced for my taste. It kind of drowns the emotion a little bit. I wish it was a bit quieter. It would have had a bit more impact, certainly for me. Uh, you know, there's something about the production that I don't... It's very One Republic, Ryan's header, you know? The, that drum kit, very garage band. Vocally, Orika is on point. So it's a compelling vocal performance. I mean, lyrically, this is, I mean, this is speaking to me. And I can hear, I can extract. That was good. I can extract the lyrics. Okay, vocally, my girl is on fire. It's a little busy though. way to end the track you know there's a lot I love here but there are a few things I'm concerned about and I just feel like mm, they should have gathered a listening party you know too many cooks a little bit you know I, I just feel like there is it's slightly overproduced and predictably so I would have liked her vocals to have taken more flight you know, it is drowned in places. But this is good. I mean, the, 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 this is good. And, you know, Eurovision fans love Ulrika. They they resonate with her story. They feel her pain. And you know what? Considering most people came back in 2021, rightfully or wrong, you know, or wrongly, whatever, I think that in some ways she never got her prize. So... I'm all about it. If this is her year, you know what? I'm ready to support. I'm ready to support. In any event, this track will need to be slightly rejigged because it is slightly under the um, submission mark of three minutes. So whilst you're revamping it, you may consider the other elements. Okay, 
Moving on, the next act is Elric Ness. The song is called Topic. Hitting play. Okay. We've gone into it. Eric used to live in London. I can tell you that much. He moved to London straight after high school. And he lived in the UK for seven years. Playing his music up and down the city. He writes his own music. He's been to Nashville to write songs. This is a very singer-songwriter. I mean, it's decent, but... You know, if this song was in the Belarusian pre-selection, I would be wowed. But it's Norway, you know? Quality is expected. And whilst this isn't bad, it's just another song, isn't it? I can group to it though, quite radio friendly. But it sounds like a song you don't debut with, you know? It sounds like something that comes from an established stable, you know? This is just one of their songs, you know? This is not their standout hit. It's got that sort of sing-along, you know, big crowd feel. It's decent. Do I like it? Yes. Yeah. Do I love it? Depends on the day you're playing it. Uh, you know what? Considering I've skipped most of the songs in 2023 from other pre-selections and I journeyed with this right till the end, Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, this is good, this is good. Okay, two songs down, two good songs down. Okay, Melody Grand Prix, where you at? Next up is, oh my God, it's not Christine, it is Kate Goldbranson. You, we all know her, we all love her, the voice of the Paralympics. She also performed in Tokyo for the um, World Song, World Popular Song Festival. So, and she's a big star in Norway. She's got lots of hits. Wow, a an impressive career. Like, okay, do you know what, babe? Enough fangirling. This is a moment. I'm gonna cue the track. The track is called Paradise. Oh, I'm excited. Hitting play. Beautiful voice. I've always been a fan. It's in Norwegian. Her voice is just... Beautiful. There's a familiar nostalgic quality to this ballad, right? Some may call it old fashioned, but I can extract the modern elements, you know? And ballads, you know, you really don't have much scope, right? It's a genre that is timeless, it is classic, but you can embellish it with modern, with modern flourishes. And she's done that here. It's been cradled quite beautifully. Like it, like it. And I don't speak no, can you imagine if I actually understood what she was thinking about? That would so elevate this. Wow, Norway, this is a tough year. Three good songs so far. 
Any of these three I'll be okay with. Really. These are good songs. Oh! Bo! That was a turn! I really like this one though. I mean, love it. I like it. I like it. There's a confidence that she exudes in her voice. It's almost like I'm not here to even compete. I'm just here to sing my song. And you know what? Sing your song, you will because I am listening, and so far, it's totes amaze. We move on. Okay, Rasmus Tal is next. The song is called Tresco. So Rasmus is a singer, songwriter, artist, producer, performer, and he's been making music for over 15 years. Okay, so you would remember Farida's um, song Dangerous last year. Well, he produced that. So now he's back in the competition with a song to sing for himself. Cueing the track and hitting play. Okay. We are moving. Fleur East. I like the bass track. I don't like the... Let's see where this is going. He's signed to Universal. Big deal. I can't listen to this actually. Where are we? Give it a bit more time. Forty-seven seconds. I'm actually done. It sounds a bit infantile, and compared to the other three that I've heard before that, for me, this is out. Okay, Rasmus, you're amazing. Music runs in your veins. You're, you know, you've got a fabulous bio. You're signed to Universal. Deb and Adoramy can't hurt you. We move on. Queen of Kings is next. Oh, Queen of Kings is the song. The artist is called Alessandra Mel. And she has lived her, twi she's 20 years old. And she moved to Norway two years ago after finishing high school. To get close to her Norwegian family and to develop her interest in music. Frank Sinatra is one of her inspirations. And she won a music competition with ABBA's Dancing Queen. She participated in The Voice in 2022. We are going to cue the track. Hitting play. I like her vocal tone. Sounds like a really modern musical number. I like her voice. It reminds me of Marina and the Diamonds. Yeah, there's an epic quality here. It's very cinematic or very stage. I can imagine a modern take on Ruslana with the visuals here. You know, she's only 20 years old, so she'll move. You know, she'll give you all that, you know, Xanadu moments. This song is probably the most versatile I've heard so far in semi-final one because you can you can cue it cinematically on stage. It's not too bad here either. I mean, it's not the perfect fit. They're better fits, but yeah, this is good. Immediately you come up with visuals when you hear this. It's a song to be seen, not just heard. You know what? Uh, I kind of like it. Okay. Okay. I actually like it. I actually, there's something about it which 
it's kind of making me want to press repeat. But here's the thing, we have to move on. So privately, I'll repeat. I will repeat. Freaky for the weekend, you are coming up next. Oh, jazz. You know, generally, I don't like people coming back to Eurovision, particularly if you've done well. That was a top 10 finish, Joust. But guess what? Joust is an artist. He's a producer. Come back every year. It's fine because you'll be featuring the vocals of someone else. You come back, but you platform someone else. Brian Williams is the artist that is being platformed here. And he's an American. We know Joust from Grabbing the Moment in 2017. And that song has been streamed 32 million times across all digital platforms. Um, Spotify alone, over 20 million times. Freaky for the weekend, I'm all about it. Hitting play. Okay, so Norway allows auto-tune this year, so all these vocal effects, you will hear them as you hear them now. So far, I'm not feeling this. It just sounds really dated. Oh, the lyrics are so lame. Okay, where is this going? Oh no, please. Don't tell me you constructed this specifically for... You've got better songs in your archives. At this point, revisit the vault. One minute, seven seconds. I'm actually done. I'm actually done. And the final song to review in semi-final one is Umami Tsunami, which is a project that started in 2022, the summer of 2022, with songwriters, artists, producers, and people who work with design and visual expression. I'm going to cue the track now and hit play. Okay, this just goes into it. No build-up. Too many cooks for the broth. At this point, I'm waiting for a vocal shift. It just kind of sounds like something Justin Timberlake would lay down for a demo. For a hidden album track. Oh, it's just not... I doubt this song would be anybody's favorite. I think those who are even gonna defend it and go, oh no, no, Devin, you know, it's a good song. It's a good song, but is it your favorite? Let me just get ready for my recap. Because this, at this point, is background music for me. There comes a point when a reaction video or creating a reaction video becomes an endurance test. One minute, 27 seconds, I'm actually done. Okay, so North Melody Grand Prix, a tale of two cities. Except they're all going to be in Trondheim. But boo, let me just tell you. Of semi-final one, seven songs, collectively actually they're okay. It's, it's a fairly decent pre-selection. It wasn't that painful. And it's not diabolical. However, two standouts for me. Auriga's Honestly is good. And I think it deserves attention. But inching into my favorite spot is Kate Goldbranson. I think that this is just so compelling vocally. And I think there's an ease about it. And I like that ease because, you know, sometimes... You know, music is subjective, and I think understanding that is a very powerful, um, it's just a very powerful position to be in, where it's like, 
This is my art. I showcase it. I sing it. And I hope you like it because it doesn't feel competitive. And I think that's the beauty of it. So those are the standouts for me. Alessandra Mill, Queen of Kings. I mean, it's a moment. It's a moment. It's a moment. Semi-final two is going to be on the 21st of January. The songs are not out yet, but you know that once they drop, yours truly will react. I am Devin Adoremi on Instagram, Devin underscore Devin. I'm on other social media platforms as well. But you know what? We read blogs. We're everywhere. Ha have you seen our Norwegian mood board on Pinterest? Because if you haven't, get into it. This has been fun. Thank you for staying on this journey. And I will see you in semi-final two. See you later. Bye!